every now and then, the message to be delivered will not come from the gospel lesson, but come from the need of us having to have an understanding of what's going on in our community or what's going on in the world. And in fact, there are some who wish that preachers from time to time would preach on things other than the gospel lesson. And here we are this week having to follow in the path of our sermon from last week. So what about real life problems like rising food and gas prices or maybe issues surrounding supply and demand of products and services, thoughts about will there be enough? You know, we're moving into cooler season and in cooler season, our health seems to change just as we have a season of decline and fall, leaves falling from the cheap trees, everything going back to its original state, so are we, and preparing to move in to another phase of existence, of our life. Will it be enough? Should I hold on tight to what I have right now, knowing whether we will encounter another period of sickness throughout the land. Now, of course, these are reasonable thoughts, and I'm sure at one time or another, many of us have had those thoughts, as wise as those thoughts may be. They are not thoughts which embrace the bounty of God's kingdom. So get behind me, Satan. Those thoughts are not God's thoughts. For we are told that in the kingdom, there is no lack or want that cannot be addressed. I'd like to invite us to step back to the sermon message and concepts of last week where Father Howie talked about the fullness of of God's grace not being a place of lack, but being a place of abundance. I particularly like the concept which reminded us that God is never, ever reduced in the process of God's giving, blessing, and saving his children. And because we are created in God's image, neither are we. It's such a beautiful concept, but one that's kind of fully hard to embrace. I know I wrestled with it a little bit this week as I meditated on the lessons of last week. Did anyone else have any difficulty fully embracing that concept this past week? I know that I did. Earlier in the week, I'm about to make a confession. Don't tell. Earlier in the week, I was eating some rum raisin ice cream. And I know I wasn't supposed to have it, but you know, I love ice cream and rum raisin in particular. And it's really hard to find. And when you do find it, you go to the supermarket, there's usually only one or two pints of it left in the freezer. So you got to get it before somebody else gets it. After all, it is haagen -Dazs. So to keep the heat off from me, keep the heat from my daughter when she found out that I came home with rum raisin ice cream, I shared a little bit with my seven-year-old grandson. While we were sitting there chatting about a few things which were going on in our community, like the closing of Ollie's and Big Lots and how everything was 40% off, and even though it was kind of sad watching those stores close, I said to him, you know, 
there could be some blessing in the change that's happening in our community with these stores closing. I said, you know, yes, we lose a little of something that we used to have and that, we, that made us feel so secure, but we also gain. Because even when we let go of something we really, really enjoy, we're still not reduced because God provides for us. He looked at me intently and shook his head and said, yep, Pop Pop, you're right. So can I have some more of that rum raisin ice cream since you won't be reduced? <laughs> I said, yeah, go ahead, take the rest of it because that was really good. Even though I didn't see that coming, that was good. So the lesson here is, if you are going to preach, be careful who your audience is because they might use it against you. What is it about giving and giving abundantly that is so challenging? As children, we would give away almost everything that we had. Graciously, we give to others. Kindness was the feature of the day. Now, show of hands, how many of us remember all the expressions of kindness we saw on TV every day when we were younger? How about good old Aunt B from Mayberry RFD or little Dennis the Menace? And we can't forget Mr. Wilson. Many of those shows that we saw day in and day out expressed the feeling of society, which was one of love, acceptance, and giving. It somehow seemed to be the norm of life. Today, I'd have to say things are a little different. We're more hesitant about putting ourselves out there, perhaps because we see ourselves as broken vessels needing to hold tight to that one denera. Let me tell you what I mean. Remember I mentioned that Ollie's is going out of business? At least in Kennett Square it is. Money is flying all over the place there with mega discounts, huge purchases of things we don't need. Yet, there still is scarcity of giving in the face of abundance. For every person who checks out, the cashier says, would you like to round off that dollar on this purchase and give it to charity? And in most cases, the amount is usually less than 15 cents. And as I stood in line six and seven people deep, most said no. An unexplained scarcity of giving. The closing of the store took something that we will pay $45 right down the street today. If we went there and took the exact item that we bought there with the deep discount and go down the street and get that, exact, that same item, we will pay $45 for it down the street. Yet, through God's blessing, it's offered to us for the deep discount of 40 to 50% off as a blessing. Yet, we refuse to give back seven cents as a thank you to help others. It's not that we're bad people because we're not. We just need to practice getting over that hurdle of letting go of that fear of not having the surety of God's abundance. God's kingdom of abundance is real. Jesus speaks a lot about the kingdom of God and how vast and abundant it is. I was telling someone that the other day, and they said, 
Well, if there's enough for everyone, then why do we see homeless people on the street and people suffering all over the world? I thought about it for a minute. And I said, well, I, you know, I wish I had an easy answer for you, but I don't have the kind of answer that you may be looking for today other than to say that sin most likely has something to do with that problem. Sin. That inability of humankind to reach beyond the boundaries of self and go where God is in the heart and soul of every living creature. The Bible teaches us to love thy neighbor as thyself for a reason. Because when we care for others as we do for ourselves, we lose nothing and gain everything. We gain because when the balance of life brings all recipients up to the level of accessing God's prosperity, the recipients can then become the givers, cheerfully giving back to society in so many wonderful ways. Just like Aunt B, those apple pies that she would bake and take all over town, give them out. Little Dennis the Menace. And just like my little grandson, giving what he can as young as he is, joy and laughter. God will always provide a way for us to benefit from getting our little hustle in so that others can partake of the prosperity that we enjoy so that you too can get another scoop of that delicious treat you so desire, which is love and adoration. Amen.